Okay, yeah, good evening to all of you. Yes, yeah, welcome back, Diksha. Welcome back, Sashi. Yuvraj, welcome. Um, yeah, let's just start, guys. So today we'll be looking into an application which we are going to build at the end of this class. All right. So having said that, let me just show you how the application will look like. And we'll go and look into the stuff. Okay. Let's see if we'll be able to do justice to today's class. All right. All right. So let's start, guys. Are we ready? Okay. So prior to this, we know for sure when the, what comes to our mind when we hear of what? Socket programming. What comes to our mind when we hear of this? Okay. It's kind of what? A two-way communication, right? Okay. Involving what? Two parties. One is the word client. Another is the word server. So such that someone sends a request, another sends a response. Okay, fine. If that is the case, we end up building a simple chat or a simple application. Or you might call it uh, maybe a simple WhatsApp clone anyway. Why? We are not, we are not doing this in GUI. Okay, this application, maybe we'll see how far we can turn this into a GUI based application. So for that, let's just see what it's going to look like. Now, as you can see my entire screen, I have this here. So let me minimize the console, drag this towards this side. And if you look at properly here, you'll be able to see something here. It says server side.py. Don't worry if it doesn't make sense. Okay, we are going to go into, going to go through most of the libraries or the APIs we'll be using okay, for this class. So you can see here server side.py and you can see this side client side.py. Agreed? All right. So let's call up the server for now. I know my IP address will be exposed, but anyway. All right, so I'm gonna call this up. Fine, um, and I'm gonna get some stuff, okay? Fine, so this is done. What I have to do next is, I need to enter my name. Let's use the famous Bob and Alice example, all right? Now, I'm waiting for an incoming connection. So let me start my client side.py, okay? So he's contacting, okay? And um, let's wait for this guy to come up. It says now, enter what? The IP server's IP address, right? We know it's the same thing as the client IP address. I'm running it on the same machine, right? Okay. So this is done, okay? Now, client's name is Alice. L-I-C, done. Now, it says trying to contact what? The server, or trying to connect the server. Connected. He says Bob has joined. Who is Bob? Me, right? Now, Bob was waiting for incoming connection. Connection established. Connection from this guy, right? And I says Alice has joined the chat. All right? And press, actually type by to leave the chat room. So I am Bob. I'm saying hi, Alice, because he says Alice has joined. I say hi, Alice. Now, Alice should receive that, right? She received it from Bob. She says, hi, Bob, because she knows that Bob has joined, okay? Now, if I go here, actually, Bob should receive it. Maybe it's taking the time, okay? And then he says, type by to exit. You got the point? So let's leave this for now, and let's look into what we are going to build here, okay? At the end of this class, fine? So I'll minimize this. Maybe I'll stop all the processes for now. I've stopped all, I can actually close this. Okay, one minute, I wanna stop it first. Stop all processes, done, okay? So it doesn't matter now if I close this or if I still leave it open, fine? So prior to that, there's something that led to this communication actually, okay? So let's do a little study on that, okay? So what are we looking into? Socket word programming. We will define most of the terms, okay? What a socket is, how do we program, whatever, how do we establish a connection, how do we close a connection. So prior to this, okay, obviously you remember there will be a problem that will lead to something. Everybody knows about the pandemic, right? It's a virus. I don't know how to draw virus, but just think it has horns and stuff like that, and it is a virus. It's the Wuhan virus, right? Called what? COVID-19. So this COVID-19 is the problem that led to what? Lockdown, that led to this pandemic that we are facing, right? 
spread across different countries and with various variants. The more we try to overcome that by using vaccine, the more it becomes stronger and stronger. So something led to actually this concept of socket programming some, or something led to what communication between two, client, two parties, the client and the server. That is what we are going to look into. What was the problem? So let's try to do something here. Okay. I'm learning how to draw. draw okay. I believe you understand what I'm going to draw now. So this is a, a PC. Okay. So I have a, a desktop. Okay. So this is my desktop. And this desktop is what my client. Fine. Now, my intention, I need to talk to the server. So the server, let the server be a bigger PC, maybe red in color. Okay, I'll use this color. Okay, pink, I don't know what it is, but it is my server here. It is bigger. It is just sitting here. Okay. Fine. And this is my server. All right. Now, this is the server. The intention is for me to send a request from the client to the server. Agreed? And this request is unidirectional, but it can also be bidirectional. So let me say I request now. This is unidirectional, right? That means I only must initiate the request. Fine. But this is not what happens, right? It has to happen through a network. So this will not go like this. It will stop somewhere here. And in between, we better use a cloud as the network. So the cloud is sitting here. This cloud is my network, right? Now, this request hits this cloud, right? And this guy, the server says, okay, you requested for hello.html or hello.text or whatever. I have it. I'm going to respond to you, right? So what is the problem now? Sir, you just explained simple request and response. So what is the problem, right? Fine. We know for sure that this can be bidirectional. It can also initiate the request. And this guy, instead of saying now respond, this guy can initiate a request. And this person, I mean the client, can also respond to it. Hence, client also is bidirectional. No problem. So what are we doing? We are just sending and receiving messages in bits. What are the two main issues here? There is a problem, right? So what is the problem? This problem is of twofold. So the problem is kind of bifurcated, of twofold. So the first is what? Which address will I talk to? And we look at that. And the next is what? The data transports. Okay. How do I transport this data? All right. You remember, this is just one-to-one. -one. What if there are so many clients that are sending requests? All right. Which one will I keep it? Okay. How will I know which one needs the what? Which one needs, which one I'm talking to? Agreed. That was something that led us to the concept of ping. Let's say, I, I will come to that. So I'm talking about now address, right? So this address is what we call now what? The logical address or you call it the IP address, right? So this IP address is unique. Now, it's not like MAC address to avoid conflict. This IP address can be reconfigured if there is conflict. Say this IP address is 192.168.3. Okay, dot one, dot one. Let me use this. Now, this has to travel through a port number. So let me leave it here for now. Okay. And if you see, this is the address. Okay. And this transport says, okay, data transport. On which port number am I going to send this? So by default, TCP is what? Colon 8080. Fine. Now, so I can say, okay, the full, fully qualified address. Hence, I can say the fully qualified address. Qualified address is what? You said it right. So you can say 192.168.1.1 colon 8080. Or you say colon 80. Fine. In case that didn't go, you append HTTP in front of it. HTTP colon slash slash, right? It will go. This is the fully qualified name. Now, the problem here is we know that this is the client, right? The blue one is the client. But this client requires what now? The host name and the what IP address. And alongside the what? The port number. So 
the host name is let's call it localhost, right? Localhost or the IP address of localhost is 127.0.0.1. Fine. And it has port number colon what? 8090 or 8080. You can actually change this. No problem. Now, this knows that whenever I'm sending this request, I'm actually talking to this guy. That means when we are doing socket programming, we need the word IP address of the uh -huh, destination system. IP address of the destination system. Okay? Fine. So, in this case also, this uh, server also should have its own. Let's say server has some funny address. Okay, let it have 192.168.1, something dot one like that. And it has its own port, maybe like colon, whatever, 443, something like that. It doesn't matter. But let me use again 1890 because I'm talking of TCP. Fine. So I'll say 1890. Fine. So now you got the concept, right? That it's just not that when you say you're sending messages, it doesn't just happen like that. It happens via this unique identification system. If that holds true, then that means that we have what we call the standard ports. Okay, so standard ports. And for that, I'm going to show you something here. Okay, before that, let me just call up my ping command and let's do something here. So think of this as I will go to my CMD, I will maximize the screen. I hope this is visible. I'm going to ping some address. Let me ping my local host. So what am I saying? I want to talk to this local host and I know the name, is, the IP address is 127.0.0.1. Do I need the port number for now? It's optional, okay? So I press enter. So what I will get, I'm seeing here, pinging 127.0.0 or 32 bytes of data. Let's see if it's going to time out, all right? So you see here, um, we are waiting. Why is my local host not responding? Okay, let's see. Now, as this happens, okay, I'll minimize this and let's continue, okay? So there'll be some standard ports, all right? So the first one, 21, is for what? File transfer protocol, FTP. So I'll see if you'll be able to remember, 23, I think 25, going to 80, okay? And then I have my 110, I have my 119, and I have 443. So if you notice, you must have come across uh, call this and this guy, okay? Why? Guys, why? So this is for your what? Hypertext transmission protocol. And this is for what? Hypertext transmission protocol. What? Secured, right? So this is for what? Web, right? No problem. And this is also for web. Now, if we get into what? Sending and receiving mail messages, we need the what? SMTP port. And that is colon 25, which is SMTP. That is for simple mail transmission protocol or transfer protocol. This is for sending emails, okay? Now, and one of the things we always know is the file transfer protocol. And in case, if you want to take access or remotely log into a system, we need this telnet, right? Number, sorry, telnet is, I think, is port 23. Yes, but we can use 22 for SSH. Okay, secure socket, whatever layer, and then things like that. And this is for telnet. Okay, so primarily you must have come across this and this. Okay, now there are so many of them. Okay, let me see if my stuff has replied. I don't know why it's taking time. Request timed out. All right, so you couldn't ping this. So let me ping some random IP address. Okay, because this timed out. Um, I will say, okay, fine, it timed out, no problem. Let me ping some stuff. Four times it has to send, and this is it. Packets, resend this, that, whatever. Loss is 100%. Okay, so let me ping some random IP address. So I will say, ping 192.168.1.1. I think, let's see. So this is sending, is receiving, and the loss is 0%. Actually, this is kind of my local word now uh intran uh, intranet okay so this runs in this college so fine this is okay i have this right no problem so i'm able to get this so what did i do actually i tried talking to a local reward server and this server responded but when i didn't have my local host set up okay oh sorry okay i didn't have my yeah, local host set up so i was unable to 
talk to this guy. However, I was able to talk to this and I got some stuff. So in case if you are interested to know how the port numbers that are open, I think it's called net start, I think, dash AB, let's see. Fine, um, this requires elevation, okay? And you see it says that this operation requires elevation. What does that mean? Now, why are we going here? We want to know some of the ports that are helped open and some of them that are closed, right? So what I will do, I will say, okay, it requires elevation. It's telling me I have to run this in as an AdWord administrator. I'll right click, I say run as admin, and there we go. Okay, I'll maximize this back. I'll just say net start, okay, NET, STAT, dash AB. Now, once I put this now, you will see, okay, for purpose of those that want to hack, I'm not going to explain more about this, but you see some ports, right? And it's listening on port what, 139, this is the TCP. So if you see listening, that means that the port is open and these guys can actually hack it. So anyway, that is done. Now, why did we say this? There are more than 64,000 open ports that are there, right? So you see, many of these ports can be randomly assigned, okay? Now, something also we know that if you want to know this active what that is to know the ports that are open but if you want to view active connection same thing we have to do but let me go back and start it in an elevated mode i'll get back here i'll say okay fine run as admin and in this case now i'll maximize this i'm running as admin as you can see there i will type the same thing net st80 net statistics now i'll just say dash a now when i type this now you see i'm getting a different thing here right so some of them that are open, and you see, are actually talking to my local host. So why did that time out? Why did that time out? I need, it's now on a different port number, right? Colon, six to some stuff, right? This is supported, established, and this is listening. Fine. All right. So this is it. And um, with this now, we need to know, fine, for us to establish a connection, right? We need to use what now? The fully qualified name. That means we need to have what? The word host name comma, what port number, fine, port number, okay? So in all the cases, so this is how we establish a connection, right? Now, if this is heard, if this holds true, then let's look into the concept of our what? Client server architecture, okay? So what we know is that there's something we call request and response, which we have seen from here, right? So client sends a request, okay? And we cannot say, okay, fine, I need some static HTML pages. And, client and server says, okay, take the HTML page, right? And that goes. Things go, go keep happening back and forth until the host office, I mean, the connection is established and exchange happens, okay? Or, we, or something we call handshaking. And that led us to something we call what? Socket programming, okay? What are sockets? So we take a definition, okay? What are sockets? In respect to what? Well, what? Um, programming, right? So you see, a socket is just a communication word end point. Simple term, a communication end point. What does that mean? Okay, so think of it that, just visualize this, I have a laptop, a desktop system. Okay, majority of you don't use desktop, but just think of it that the desktop system is here. This is the client. I have another one, another desktop system sitting here, and that's the server. Okay, so this is the server. Now, in this, this server has an endpoint. So you think of it as a point, and the client also has an endpoint, which is a point here. Okay, now I need to connect this across the network, right? So I'm gonna link this guy across the network, right? That was all we've seen at the abstract level, right? So these two terminals are called what sockets. Okay, so, but you will not see it physically, agreed, it's not physical, right? So let's take some other definition as relates to what we are going to do in Python, right? So now we know that socket, okay, is supported by the socket library model. So this socket is supported, right? So think of it as an API, okay, which enables us to establish this connection. If that holds true, that means we need to import it. So let's look at the socket basics. How do we create sockets now? That leads us to the next subtitle, socket basics. So in this, we need to understand a couple of things, okay? How do we create a socket, okay? First one, how do we create this guy? How do we create a socket? 
and you guessed it right okay so sockets are created firstly by importing the model so we say import what socket so we are not seeing from socket import socket after this is done we can create an instance of them we instantiate the socket and say it is socket what dot socket okay now we give it the what the address or the family name or address name with what the type with what the type okay now and this address family can be please listen so actually it's not the address name it's actually called address family name address family name because it has a family of what addresses where i'm going to explain this now where this where uh is called um, um address family name address family is further divided into socket dot af pay attention to this underscore inet okay so this is for what internet protocol version 4 internet what protocol v4 which we call what ipv4 and you guessed it there'll be another one for ipv6 agreed fine that one is called what aha uh -huh. a what socket same thing dot what af underscore i net six so when we do not specify the version by default it is what version four so when we specify this this is for internet protocol version six ipv6 right good now that means that we need to have now this is the socket family name so we need now to look into what the socket family types or the socket types so the socket types include what now socket types and soon we'll go into some documentation okay so the socket type in, can include your FT, so ftcp and what user datagram protocols okay so the, there are two types here which we know one is what the, obviously we are using the socket instance okay or the socket class socket dot s o c k capital underscore stream okay this stream class establishes connection using what stream based protocol like your tcp transfer or transmission control protocol now the next one is your what of uh, socket what dot stock digram so it's called stock digram okay underscore digram and you guessed it right it's called what your for udp or user datagram what protocols okay udp now if that holds true so let's take some common examples okay mm -hmm. and i think for that we really need to kind of maybe insert them as an example okay so we have seen what sockets are okay and in case if you needed some basic definition now let's go to internet and ask it see here i kept this open okay what are sockets okay and we've seen that this tutorial i find it useful okay using a socket creating a socket socket and some history so these are used everywhere, but most of them usually under, it's one of the most you know, for a severely misunderstood technologies around there about this and that. So he says, I'm not going to talk about this. We have seen this, right, for V4, because they are used forward by 99% of the sockets. Fine. And then that I will only talk about the stream, fine, which we have seen for the TCP. Now, so some basic history of this internet protocol, whatever sockets are by far, whatever, given this and that, they were invented in Berkeley as part of the BSD flavor of Unix, no problem. How do you create sockets? Says, use an instance of that socket, the socket of which one? I'm using Fort version 4 and I'm using this fine. And I'm going to connect to this website called python.org on what? Port number 80. So everybody knows this now is making sense, right? So when this connect completes, this socket instance can be used to send a request, fine, to that page. That's why we see here now, okay, we now say, okay, fine, look here, look here, okay. So here we said we have created this and connected on IP version 4, fine, and then we have to bind this socket to a public host and a well-known port number. So we get the host name, which can be anything, ranging from 1 to 7.0.0 and some port number. And we allow it to listen. Now, when we call this listen instance, so if you look here, take an example here, bind it on local host on colon this, or bind it on 127.0.0 on colon this. And we still have these sockets, so whatever, server running, okay? Now, if you look here, we say now, finally, the argument listen tells the socket library to that we want it to queue up for, at, for as many as what? Five connects, not five seconds, but wait 
for at least five connections are there, okay? So at least, okay? The request, okay, which is usually the maximum before refusing other connections. That's why if you see, like in U um, Bluetooth, you say that I think a Bluetooth connection can support maybe maximum of, I think, 12 Bluetooth devices, right? I'm not sure, is it six or 12, okay? So in this case, we can actually do that way, right? Now, and we need to ensure that this holds true. Let it run until what? Uh -huh. We maybe like enough connect connections has been actually established, okay? So we say, okay, fine. Why through accept connection from outside, right? Accept this and now do something with the client connection. Maybe let's say start initiate that uh, chat box, which we are going to create soon, okay? And then use this, fine? And this is it. And this is what we have and this is how we use socket and things and some example, okay? Fine. If this holds through now, now let's get back and try to see some stuff. So when in this socket now we have seen a couple of things, okay? We have seen the domain, we have seen the type, which can be what? Stock, stock underscore stream, that is this first one, or what the data diagram, okay? So which is for TCP and the other one is for what? UDP. Now, and then another thing we need to know is like we have seen other, so we can call them now like or terms associated with this, fine. So socket are of two types, don't forget that, this and that. Now in socket model, let's explore what is inside. Okay. whenever we create this. So let's take a closer look at this socket model. So if you look here, we say, okay, find the socket model. Okay, the socket model. What can we make out of this model? All right, so here we have this. Okay, we have seen it previously, okay, that it is something of this nature, socket dot socket of something. Okay, now we have the socket family. Okay, underscore family. And then we have the socket what type underscore type and we have the protocol okay so by default is zero fine so we need to assign this to some value okay now you see that we've come across this family we come across the word type now right so and then this protocol if we leave it out it defaults to what zero okay so this is what we have right if that holds true then there will be methods on this socket right and this now we are looking at what now the socket methods so let's look at two ways now because we know communication happens via server between the server and the client so let's explore the server socket model okay because all these methods sorry methods m-e-t-h-o-d-s so all this you're going to see when we get back here because if you look at this this is the server method right so you see i imported time i import a socket i import a sys now i allow it to wait for some time just so that this gets printed okay i know set up setting up server dot 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 wait and now take the socket get the host name right and get the ip address and i want it to listen on port one two three four and then i bind the host name to the port number and say that okay fine i need this f string right I needed this to take this file. Whenever this person enters a name, I was okay waiting for in connection or something like that. And you see, it's very easy, right? Almost. So let's leave this for now and get back here. So in this socket methods, what do we know now? We're going to look at the first one, right? Bind method dot bind. So what does this bind do? So it's present in this instance, right? Okay. So we are taking this instance now. S dot bind. What does it do? So this method binds the address. So what do we mean by binding now? Can, it, can we say it establishes the connection between the host name and the port number of the socket, okay? So it says binds what? Mm -hmm. Addresses of what? Of host name, okay? With what port number pair, okay? Port host name and port number pair to the what? Socket, fine? Got it. So we must use that. After that, we have we see now what listen, right? S dot listen. Okay. So what does this do? This starts what the TCP connection. This actually okay. Sorry, say this is not start. What I say sets up the this sets up. Okay, it sets up and starts yes and start this connection. Start TCP destiner. Okay, fine. And then, as it, once it started, now I'm going to use what now to accept, okay? And as the name implies, this accepts what now? Uh -huh. Actively, okay? Now, there are two things here, okay? Should it actively accept or passively accept? So, let me say, accepts what? TCP client connection, okay? Until there is a blockage. Let's say it has exceeded, right, the number of concurrent users. 
find TCP connection. Okay. So with this now, this is on the server side. So let's look at some of the parameters that you pass on the client side, right? So we look at the client side what methods. So on this client side method, okay. So we look at I think maybe almost everything, but I think the major difference here will be what uh, the connect method, okay. So and we look at the code in a while. So here I have what as that connect fine. So what does this do? So this method actively initiates TCP connection. So initiates one initiates another one accepts initiates what TCP server connection and this makes sense now so the one that initiates is the one that is active right but default so actively initiates and this one that accepts is passively got it guys so just some english whatever terms even i might be wrong with that and now outside this outside this you're going to see some methods let's go down and you will see something here where we call this method is called receive so if you go down, you will see there is this method which we said uh, connection. Did you see this? Receive. Okay. Then you see the code. Okay. And then uh, maybe you see, uh, yeah, connection that receive sock dot access. So this is an object we created, right? So from the socket, no problem. So maybe we need to talk about this RECV what and the code, right? That's the only thing now that is left. Fine. Fine. And if you see from the client si server side, it's almost the same thing with what is on the client side, right? See here, everything. We imported same thing, set this up, same thing, get the same, right? Okay. But you see the difference here, connect. Okay. Connect is not there on the server side. Okay, guys, let's continue. Now, when you get back here, what you see here now is uh, we look at what now the general socket methods. Okay. General sockets methods so what are most of the methods that are available in this now using that object as a reference we've seen this s dot receive let me call it receive only okay s dot receive method then dot send method okay dot receive from method okay from then send to method so you see many of them we do actually they they are implemented to do what they are asked to, their name implies like if we say close it should close if we say receive it should receive if you say send it should send if we say get what host name it should get what host name okay get host name fine so when we use these the, all these methods now so let's differentiate them like this and these are their descriptions okay all right, so these are the method names. Okay, and here, this receive does what now? Uh -huh. Receives what? TCP messages, right? Good. What does this do? Send what? Oh, let's call it transmits, right? TCP messages. Now, receive from is going to work on what? User datagram whatever this that platform that platform what message okay now send to now look here that's why it's different from receive and what receive from and send to these two work on udp fine and close does what close this what the socket right it's like when you open a file for writing you have to use the same what method say sorry you have to call the close to close that and get host name you guessed it returns what uh huh, the host name, right? So whether it's a local host or any host like that, it will return that. Fine. So we look at a simple server program and we wind up. Okay. So let me try something and then let's do something here and we go and run this. Okay. So for that, I'm going to use Tony for that. T H O N N Y. Now in this, I was okay. Fine. Uh, I'm going to use this. Okay. This is a simple client. Uh, let me open the server and I will explain that. Fine, open uh, server, I think. No, this is density. Okay. So, okay, let's let's create it uh, for, from scratch. Okay. So, I'm going to press F5 now. I'll say server, SCR, VER, server demo, dot py. Fine. So, what do we do first? We import the what? Uh-huh 
the socket, right? SOC, because we have to import it, right? So after we imported it, now what do we do? We instantiate that, right? Say socket dot socket. That's what we do. Socket dot socket. Fine. If this holds true, sorry, I omitted C there. Now we now need to get the host name, right? So we get the host name. We say socket dot uh -huh. dot what? Get host name. G E T H O S T N A M E. Call this method, which will return the host name. Fine. Now, and we better assign it to a variable which we are going to use. We so okay, let it be assigned to host only. This is done. And we move on to the next thing. Okay. So the next says, I'm going to do what now? Assign some port number to this. I'll say this port is going to be something. Let's put it one, two, three, four, five for now. Okay. Now, I'm going to do what now? Bind this, right? Fine. What am I binding, guys? I'm binding the what? Uh-huh. Host name to the what? Port. is a pair, right? So I'll take host, H-O-S-T, and I'm binding it to the port. Fine? Good. So this holds true. And look here, actually. I'm act is a pair. That means, look, but if I say this bind host with port, I did not bind it as a pair. Agreed? That's why I'm going to use this double quote. Fine. I'll say, oh, sorry, oh, not double quote, I beg your pardon. Okay, braces. Okay such that you should treat this as what a pair right not treating them as individually fine now i'll allow it to establish this word uh client connection and wait for that okay so let me give this space i'll say s dot what now we don't want that let's wait for allow it to allow five connections to be established before it does anything is what now listen right method i use that after this listen method now i will now keep it open right i'll say while true okay so why true, I need to do what now? Okay, establish a connection with the word client, agreed? Okay, so the client will be this and address on the, the client, I'll say it is address, okay? Now I need this, I'll just, see I'm ax I, I've, I've binded that, right? From the socket, right? So I use this, that socket object and say accept, okay? So fine, now this does that, and maybe like I said, okay, fine. Uh, let's print some stuff, right? Once the connection is established, I can also say print uh, uh, received connection from received connection from whom I don't know from where now? Address agreed. A D D R. Fine. Now, if this holds true, I can also say fine. Uh, send this right thank you for connecting i'll just say okay fine see uh that is what now the connection the, with the client right remember we are on server right so i'm sending this back i'll say okay fine to what say some message thank you for contact for next contacting me okay so, okay thank you for connecting or something like that for contacting or for connecting anything you can print okay connecting this holds through then I have to do what now? Close this connection. Okay. Now let's see. So if this holds true, this is for what now? The server. That means let's run this and see there is no error. Okay. Let's go and create for the client. Agreed? So let me see if this holds true for the client. Okay. So this is actually the server. So I allowed it to sleep. It's lengthy. So from the client, now look here. So since server is here, don't get confused. All right, let's create it. So you follow till here, agreed? Now, now we go and look at the what now? The client. So the major thing we need in the client is what? Socket.connect, right? That, that opens our what? The TCP connection to the host on that same port, right? Fine. If that is the case, so let me say new now. And I'm going to call it now client demo F5. Call it client demo now now what do we need exactly import what i don't know import what socket s-o-c-k-e-t done after we imported it now again same thing socket dot socket right and we are using this object okay we say that is socket what okay dot s-o-c-k-e-t no problem now, once this host to now, I need to get the host name, and we have seen it before. We assigned it to what? Host, right? And we called it what? Socket.get host name. Socket dot what? Get uh -huh. host name. Fine. Everything holds true. Fine. 
Now, on which port number PORT, it has to be same right, otherwise it will time out. Now, in the other program, which I'm going to explain in a while, you, it will prompt you to enter the host name because host name can be different. So we use 12345 for simplicity. Now, what is the difference now? We are going to say socket.connect, right? Fine. So what is that is the reference to the socket? It's as dot what? Connect. Agreed? C-O-N-N-E-C-T. Now, obviously, this will not take the two pairs. What happens in the server? Server binds. Okay? Client connects. Agreed? Fine. So this we connect on what? Host. And what? Port. Fine. If this host runs, now, so print some message. Okay. So print. So this is what I want you to understand. Print. Uh, I'll say maybe like uh, some whatever we receive, right? From that. Okay. That object dot what? Uh, say receive some stuff, right? R-E-C-V. Did we look, do a study on this? Yes, right? So you see here, receive TCP message. This is what I'm explaining, this guy, okay? So this is on what? This one will be what on? It's a general one, but it's actually associated to the what? Client, not on the server. Fine. So uh, by default, uh, it's on this spot number 1024, okay? Even 1023 also is there, fine? Now, okay. That's host true, and then I have to close this, right? That's okay. As dot what? Close the connection. Fine. Now I don't need to pass any argument into it. Okay. So uh, I will run both together. I'll start this. Okay. Server dot whatever py server demo dot py. Now this is running. Then I'll go to the client. I say client demo dot py. Okay. Okay. It takes exactly two one argument to given. Okay. One minute takes exactly one argument but two was given okay what did i give actually there print okay um one two three four five here yeah, that should be fine it should actually show me that i have successfully connected this to that okay and done which line number seven dot connects okay so it takes one but i gave two okay yeah fine so i should take it on what uh host only Okay, if I'm taking it on host, so let's go and see this s.connect actually. So if I look at s.connect in socket programming, it should be here, right? So does it take two or one? Socket, send or receive, okay? So let's look at this. Actually, obviously it's taking two, right? See here, this guy and that, right? Fine. And see connect also, right? Host and ports, it should be fine. Okay, it should be fine. Otherwise, I'll take on the host name and let's see whether this is gonna work. Okay, so if I take hosts and then, uh, I'm not sure. Okay, so go back here, this is fine. And go back there, um, yeah, must be a tuple, not a string. So this is actually the wrong thing. It's actually right. So this takes this and then, and the hosts or ports, Hosts with ports. That is perfect. It should work. Okay, we should. I did this prior before this starting this class. It just says get got connection from some local host and on some port number. And thank you for contacting. That's what it should print. Like it should print something like this. Received. Okay, receive connection from some address. And thank you for contacting. That's all it should say. Okay. So this bind, um, is there any problem with the bind? No issue. So I'll run the complete project, but yeah, actually that shouldn't be a problem. That shouldn't be a problem. From that, yeah, this is fine. And um, okay, yeah, this shouldn't be an issue. Okay, maybe I'll try, maybe if this is the case, but still this print has to be wrapped amongst here. Okay, let me use a single quote for now. Uh, this should actually shouldn't be a problem actually okay and uh, mm -hmm. it shouldn't be an issue here if i try printing it this way let's see and then thank you for connecting t-i-n-g and then i get back here i get back to my press save get back to my client demo um nothing nothing no problem with this okay so it should actually work host with the port fine mm -hmm. is that connect okay okay sorry guys i get it see the mistake right if you go back here if you go back here do you remember this 
uh, we have to take it what as a pair, right? Where is that connect method? Yeah, um, here, okay. I think in the program only here. Go back to the server demo, okay? So the connect uh, takes it at C here. The bind takes it as a pair, right? So in the connect, actually, it should also take it as a pair. So that was the mistake. So it should work now. So I'm going to go back to this stuff and then wrap it back, okay? I wrap this guy back, I'll go back here. And uh, because this actually is gonna give me an error because obviously this print statement should be nested here. So let's run this, F5. Okay, first let's clear all the console. Run the server demo, F5, no problem. Let's go to the client now and run this. So, yep, it's run, yeah, okay. Oh, it's run, now I think there's another connection here. Look here, guys. Okay, so this, I think I should close this. Look here, this is working. Now what it says is connection refused error, right? No connection could be made because the target machine is actually refusing it, okay? So yes, so this is fine because I have run most of them here. Maybe I will now change this port, maybe to 1023, okay? Now let's see, okay, and then instead of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, maybe let me say 1, 2, 3, 4, and on the same, I'm going to say one, two, three, four, and I'm going to use one, zero, two, three on this spot. I want to run it, okay? Now I'll press F5 here, clear this. Okay, if you try this on your own, it should work. Okay, clear this, and then get back here and do the same thing. Now, where is it? Okay, okay, it's actually refusing it. Okay, I don't know why it's still refusing this connection. Okay. So I need to close the entire thing and restart the session, then only it will allow me, okay? So no problem, there is no issue with that. I, we have resolved this, okay? This was that because we didn't take it as a pair. Now, since you know this now, let's look into the complete program and we wind up, okay? So now I believe from whatever I have explained, you now understood the whole stuff. Why did we import time? We wanted to wait for some time, right? until with some connection is established. I want it to delay, okay? So we say, okay, set up, set an observer, and we have all this is now making sense now. You got the reason why we use that. And I'm listening on port one, two, three, four, okay? Fine. Now, I bind it to the host name and the port. Since I needed the two as a pair, that's why I'm getting this, right? This and that, fine. And I use this F string, I wanted it to be of this format. Enter name, it says, okay, fine. Wait, try to listen, okay? and wait for the incoming connection. Just print the message while it's listening. Now it says, okay, receive connection from, which address, which I don't know, connection established, connected from whatever, okay? Okay, fine. I put the format, okay, no problem. And here, I get the client's name, fine. From the what? Port number 1024. You see the reason, guys, why it was refusing it, right? I have used 1024. Even during the while I was preparing for the class, I also used 1023, okay? So if you change it or you close these other applications that is using it, it will work for you, okay? Now, if it didn't work, go to the chat box and drop a chat. I will just address that, okay? Fine. And finally, I'll say, okay, fine. Press buy to leave the chat room, okay? Now, I don't want to confuse you because you want to type this buy like this. So you can actually, what I meant was you just, instead of saying press buy, there is no key, keyboard called buy. I'll say type buy, right? Okay. Okay. To leave the chat room. Fine. As long as it's true, it says from me, right? from me, okay? Instead of me saying from me, I can say from the server, agreed? This is on the server side, okay? Now, if this message is exactly what, now we have not handled the exception, right? So you can check whether it is in this. So first thing, whatever you take this, you convert it to lowercase. Now it's at night, I say print good night on a new line, breakout, and then you know, use this to receive that from that, and then decode the message and print the client's name, fine, no problem. Now, this is on the server side. Look at the client side. The only difference is the connect method. That's all. Everything is the same. So client's name, I actually escaped this guy. Fine. So no need of actually using this. I can print it this way. Okay, client's name. Fine. Now, no need of this escape sequence then. You got the correct thing. So same thing also, enter server's name. I don't need this. Make it as double quotes and take out this guy and just put out that apostrophe. Uh, then and then I get this no problem now 
trying to connect to the sub, trying to connect to the server, no problem, connection established, something like that. And then everything is right, fine. Now type by to exit, fine, same thing, okay? Now, and now me, who is me now? MP string, me, who is me? Message I'm getting from the server, right? Fine. And on me on the client side, okay, say I am the client, right? Fine. So here I am saying I'm the server, okay? Fine. And here I'm saying I'm the what? Client. So I just leave it this way. I'll say I'm the client. Fine. Done. And in this case now, we, what thing we should remember is you need access to the internet, okay? Now, in most cases, you might say, okay, fine, so why do I require it? Actually, it's not compulsory, right? If you know your port number, okay? So every system will have their own unique port addresses. You mustn't be connected on the internet to run this. So having said that, we run this and we wind up, okay? Sorry. Server side, okay. Already exists, okay. Oh, I'm going to overwrite some stuff now. Okay, uh, control shift F10. Now it says set up server. So enter your name, I'll enter Bob. Now waiting for the incoming connection, right? I'll go here, I'll run this guy. Control shift F10. It says here, okay, enter IP address. It's the same thing just to ensure that I'm not confusing you guys. I copy this, I get back here, I paste this guy. Fine, enter. Now, client's name is Alice. So that was how we started this class, trying to contact. It says Bob has joined, right? So for now, I'll type by and I'm done. Okay, let me say by only by now and I'm done, okay? Now, it says that waiting for the connection. So Alice has joined. So this is the server. This is the client, right? Okay, so this has joined. Why? I think again, because this is running concurrently, okay? You saw how it was at the beginning of the class, right? So that is it for now, okay? So it's taking some time. Again, maybe there's an issue trying to send a receive response, okay? Yeah, leaving the chat room, yes, because of that by which I said, right? So uh, this is leaving the chat room, fine, done. And then I think, yeah, okay, this was the high I sent and this finished, okay? From the server, that is me, Bob, right? I sent this. So anyway, I ended it and that's it for now. So on this note, fine. Thank you guys for tuning in once again. And um, we will wind up with this and maybe tomorrow we try to look into another application, okay? I'll extend this one by turning it into a GUI based app, okay? But for now, I believe you kind of have an understanding of what socket programming, the basics. Maybe we try to look into some complex stuff tomorrow, okay? Or we try to look into another thing or maybe build a complete end-to-end -end, uh, project, uh, okay? with connection, which I have to link to what? My SQL database. So that might span a couple of classes, okay? Maybe take some, maybe three, four hours. So yes, thank you guys, and yeah, bye for now. See you tomorrow, bye.